Hi kids. So uh, today we're briefly going to go over hydraulic timing belt tensioners for Subarus. They are the bane of my existence, my Achilles heel, my nemesis. And they look like this. Okay. I've installed very, very many of these. And of those that I've installed, I have had very, very many of them fail. Go into sponge state where they lose their, their strength. And uh, that causes the timing belt to slack. And then it causes the timing belt to somehow grab itself and break like this. And when that happens, the valves get in the way of the pistons, which are still moving and they become bent and you have no compression and the car will not run. Okay. Without a complete teardown and the cylinder head rebuild with new valves. So what's the big deal on these tensioners? I really wish I could give you a definitive answer. I can only say after so many failures that it has to be something that I'm doing wrong. Okay. And I believe that the cause of the failures is air that is introduced into this hydraulic piston that mixes with the fluid and causes sponge state is what Gates calls it in their in their uh, technical bulletin so once it goes into sponge state it was it doesn't tension the belt properly as I said and then you have the problems so why why does it go into this sponge state why have some of these that I've installed work just fine and why have some of them failed prematurely all of these tensioners that have failed for me have been Japanese parts okay I do not compromise on that because I know that timing components you, you just you don't compromise on that for Subarus you use the Japanese parts okay so all of these are Japanese parts I do not live nearby a dealer so I cannot go to the dealer and buy parts I have to buy all my parts online so no matter where I buy the parts they have to be shipped to me and in a case such as this one, this thing could be shipped any possible way. I've been told that when these tensioners are stored in any other way other than upright, air is allowed to be introduced where it shouldn't be introduced and you can have problems and you have to bleed, these, bleed the air out very, very slowly of these tensioners so that they don't go into sponge state. I have had less issues using this Ison kit. I get the Ison kits from Rock Auto. I look them up on isonaftermarket.com for my application. I order them from Rock Auto. And I think the reason why I've had so much more success with the Ison kits isn't because it's the quality of the tensioner. I don't think that's it because everything I'm using is identical. It's all Japanese. That box with the tensioner in it, the auto tensioner, was sitting in here like this in such a way that the tensioner was stored upright. And that's the way these ice and kits come. Instead of in an individual box that could be on their side or stored, whatever like that. I'm thinking that that's why I've had less failures with the icing kits. I have recently had a failure on an 08 Forester from an icing kit. So I don't like that. Um, and I just don't trust, I just don't trust, I guess I don't trust myself doing these right now until I have enough successes um, and it's this tensioner. This is, this is the reason for all of the problems. And I think by bleeding the air out of these tensioners, I'm going to eliminate these problems. The kit comes with these instructions 
and the part about the tensioner says this. Okay, check auto tensioner for leakage or damage, replace if necessary. Measure protrusion of push rod from auto tensioner body. If not within oh, two hundredths or 24, I'm sorry, 20 hundredths or 24 hundredths of an inch, replace tensioner unit. Hold auto tensioner upright and press push rod with a force of less than 66 pounds. If push rod moves, proceed as follows. Slowly press push rod three times until flush with upper surface of tensioner body. Hold auto tensioner body upright and press push rod with a force of 66 pounds. If push rod moves, replace. Hold auto tensioner upright. Using hydraulic press with a force not exceeding 2,205 pounds, slowly press the push rod into auto tensioner. Align holes and retain with the pin. Hmm. So Ison knows you have to do something about it. So quite simply, it's too simple really, you put some tension on this so that you can pull the pin. You pull the pin, and something like over three minutes time, you slowly let this all the way out. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Subaru only on YouTube, shout out to him. He does it over three minutes or something. He said you move this like the, like the uh, second hand on the clock. And now that I've had so many failures, I am doing it almost painstakingly slower. I'm going to bleed this thing up and down like four or five times just because I'm too nervous and paranoid because I've had too many failures and I'm sick and tired of it. The last one... As I cranked it back down tighter, I did it over six minutes. I think I've heard that the Subaru procedure, you're supposed to do it over a certain period of time without exceeding a certain pressure. I don't know what that pressure is, and I don't have any gauges to test it, so I'm just going really, really, really slow. Okay, so it's all the way out, and we're going all the way back in. And this needs to be vertical in a press that's vertical. Okay, because there, if there's any air in there, it needs to be allowed to reintroduce itself into the proper place. Something, something air and oil and voodoo in there with a spring, and then there's a seal at the top. So, I don't know. There's got to be a better way. I have one that I tore apart, and I put a valve spring in it. I had to cut the valve spring down um, so that it was not too long. And then I put it all back together. And I'm actually thinking about putting that in one of my daily drivers just to see if it does work. I mean, yeah, it's stupid and it's redneck, but I'm sick and tired of these things falling apart. Not falling apart, but failing, and then people message me, and they're like, hey, I got a car question for you. Um, going down the road, and the car just died. Tried to start it, and it's like the starter's going, but nothing else is going. I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what that is. Your timing belt broke, and... Uh, I've drug a lot of cars back home on the trailer because <sighs> timing belts have broken. Had a lot of cylinder heads apart. Put a lot of new valves in. And this is really tight, and I like that. And I'm going really, really slow. Really, really I would slow. really like you to comment respectfully. If you've had issues with tensioners failing, causing premature belt failure, um, and subsequent engine damage. I need to know if I'm the only person that's had this many failures. I, I just need to know. So, please comment. Let me know what your experience is, what your thoughts are. 
Thank you.